From the Ugly Parrot Studios in Newcastle, California, the Loom Cigar Cartel presents Beyond the Humidor, a cigar podcast for the rest of us. Episode 120, Scott Robinson with you for... Don't... Nip, nap, nap. Scott Robinson with you for another episode 120. Wait, what? Okay. 121. I thought he said 120. No. <laughs> Fucking gorilla. No. <laughs> Negative Ghost Rider. I was trying to sing all great. Just let him keep going, and I'll just flash the right number on screen every fucking time. We can do that anyway. <sighs> so how you doing, Scott? Not too great, apparently. <laughs> Would you like to run uh, it again? No, hell of a recovery, though. <laughs> hell of a recovery. <laughs> Hit the iceberg, just bounce right off the son of a bitch. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you know... This is a way of making me humble. So we're going to leave this in, and I'm not going to even ask for a second take. I yeah. fucked up. Good, because we don't do two takes. Simply... <laughs> Listen to the moral superiority. Hey, man, quit fondling the beaver. I have to dress the beaver properly. Scott didn't. <laughs> I need to blur this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very likely. Yeah, quit pulling the beaver shirt up. There we go. That's better. Now Bucky's wearing his clothes. Wow. So, Greg, how are you doing? I'm just skipping all this <laughs> bullshit, and I'm just going oh, with sure. introductions. Go right to him, right after he fondles the beer. <laughs> oh, well, that means he's in a good mood. I'm doing. He's relaxed and stress de-stressified. So, go on now that yeah, you are let's, stressed. Let's go with that. Before he falls asleep. Yeah, yeah, I like that doddering <laughs> old fool that we all know and love. So, I'm doing good, you know, uh, stressful at times, but it's okay. You know, good cigars and... Good friends and all of you, and here we go. I thought we weren't talking about presidential shit on this episode. I thought he meant Tommy. I said, oh. doddering old fool, you pick one. And no offense, Tommy. Yeah, well, how about you, Lawrence? Uh, not too bad, man. We're firing up this uh, this stick that Greg brought us. Having a little trouble uh, keeping this thing lit so far, but... I think it's an operator error, personally, but we'll see. Yeah. Hey, over in the Gorilla Enclosure, CEO of Gorilla Industries, how the hell are you? I won't lie. I've been better. You don't <laughs> look any better. I'm, a, I'm exhausted. I was at camp last week, and then things happened, and then I just looked to confirm that, yes, this is episode 121 because the last episode was 120, and then I remembered what I named the last episode, and I couldn't help but laugh. Yes, that the is true. The end is nigh is what I <laughs> the last episode. But, well, so yeah, it's your fault. We're doing, I'm doing all right, but yeah. All right. <laughs> Boy, this is just taking off on this Boy, episode, yeah, isn't it? You know what? You know what? I, I was going to recommend, and I'm just going to say it now, and if we want to edit it out, I can. There's an elephant in the room. We're purposely not going to address the elephant in the room because it's too early. We may later. Or we may not. Or we may not. We'll see. So can I address a different elephant in the room? Sure. I'm we have... I'm sitting right here, man. We have so many elephants. Well, no, you're a kangaroo by your own admission, but that's okay. We got fan mail. Woo! I wonder who I it's say, from. I would say, geez, try to look happy there, Mr. Robinson. We just got a letter. We, we just, just got, got a letter. letter. <laughs> we just got a letter. <laughs> I wonder who it's from. <laughs> you can't just give me the back half of it. So this is for <laughs> this letter is from uh, Rich Denhart. He comes from Georgia, if I remember correctly. Well, all right, gentlemen and Larry. Huh. Wow, that was a nice. <laughs> is it sad in that in these days of 100 ways to instantly communicate, you guys cannot get your audience to engage with you? Okay, you asked for it. Just so you know, Rich, so did you. Every Friday night here in Marietta, Georgia, I escape to either the reclining deck chair on my or my rocking chair on my southern deep front porch and enjoy a good cigar and adult beverage after a week of work pain. We empathize. Why do you sound like you're running a fucking race, man? Yeah, take a breathe. breath. <laughs> Your podcast is my attitude readjustment or readjusting and cigar master class. You sound like the slow kid in class who's told to read a paragraph. Next time I'll let you do it. Can't thank you enough for the live reviews, lively banter, and humor and stories. 
You are great entertainment every two weeks. Tonight, the tabernacle and the gin went perfectly with the Father's Day episode. Glad you didn't die, Scott. Jesus. Nice. That's very nice. That's, the, that's one of the nicest things I've heard today. And it's still early. Probably yet. be yeah. the last one, too. <laughs> he goes on to say, I travel for work and do my best to dive into local cigar retailers. I have a customer in Escalon that I visit one to two times a year. On my next trip, Loomis Cigar, i.e. actually, Rich, that would be Tobacco Republic, will be on my drop list. I hope to meet you, uh, some of you, or at least have my picture next to the cardboard cutout of the crew. Larry, you got to get on that. I know. I'll bring you all some goodies, too. I owe you for the good times. Keep up the good work and first-class podcast. Okay, hold on. I, maybe I was forgetful. The cardboard cutout, which cardboard cutout? The, the, car, the cartoon? Yeah, we're going to do one of those. Oh, cool. The one that yes. he looks like Bill Dotrieve? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to put bunny ears on him, though. Finally... Quit whining, gorilla. Uh-oh. Rich Denhart. P.S. Bucky's is a place of worship. Well, he's from Georgia, for Christ's sake. <laughs> they got as many Bucky's as they do Methodist churches. <laughs> he knows what's up. Yeah. See, you haven't frequented a Bucky, so you don't know. And I understand. I understand the hatred or even, you know, best case, the discomfort no, or no, the out, apprehension time out, time out, time out, of Bucky's. I'm as I'm as white trash as they come, and I still don't want to get my gasoline, my barbecue, socks, and, and take a shit, and take a shit all at the same place. You, you say that now, you say that as a West Coaster. When you walk into Bucky's, it's like walking into the house of God. You will be. Your mind will be blown in a maze. You take I, Sherry with I, all I've the. I've been to no. a Bucky's, man. I, 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 Have hey, you? Yes. Okay. I mean, it's no love's travel stop. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, <laughs> God damn, man. Hey, you know what? Let's get down to the real nitty gritty. What are the, what are Bucky's lot lizards like? <laughs> Come on. If we're going to rate it, let's rate it. Come on. Hey, what, hey, Ranch, help us out with that, buddy. I mean, oh. there's got to be there's got to be a Bucky's. You all right? Maybe that's why they don't allow, allow trucks. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's why they don't allow trucks. Hey, what's the what's the lot lizard ratio in Marietta, Georgia? Good God! Oh, oh we're hang, going straight to hell on that one. Hang your head in shame. Hey, speaking of which, man, after the heat out here the last couple of days, I've uh, come to the conclusion I am probably not going to survive well in hell. No, no, I agree with you, Larry. Yeah, well. <laughs> well, well, Bad just up. look, just yeah. because you've got an air-conditioned apartment and asbestos pajamas made doesn't mean the rest of us can afford that. But seriously, uh, Rich, hey, man, thanks for, uh, yes. thanks for reaching Thank out. Thank you. Um, we would uh, we'd be honored to meet you, sir, when you travel to this neck of the woods, and uh, you know you may not even be able to have to take a, a picture with a cutout. You may be able to get you know one or two of the real thing, or all of us if you yeah, give us yeah, enough you, warning. Yeah, you give yep. us enough warning. We'll even uh, we'll even put a collar on the grill and drag him along. <laughs> I'm assuming he wants me to stop whining about Bucky's. He was very vague. I don't know, but we'll probably listed a second email. By I, the way, please do. There'll be a list. <laughs> so <laughs> things the gorilla needs to stop whining about. I know gorilla needs to uh, disappear halfway through this episode. So um, he spits on himself. Well, it's a gorilla. What do you want? Wow, that wasn't very nice, <laughs> gorilla. Mm-hmm. The last <laughs> I don't know six or eight episodes you've been talking about something special coming to Roseville. It has come and gone. Mm-hmm. Man, the way the sound echoes is so weird. It sounds it sounds like it's on the other track. Yeah, it really does. You are not ready for how big this thing is. No, I'm not. Pat, stop moving.
Oh, uh, people in the windows. Uh. Go right ahead, Gorilla. Tell us about it. So, uh, Union Pacific, for a long time, has had one serviceable traveling uh, locomotive they call the Big Boy. It's the one of, one of, if not the largest steam engine ever built. They finally have a second one restored. Uh, and they were going to do this a couple years ago. They ended up canceling it. I think it was 2020. It was um, COVID year. And they finally did their great westbound tour, Cheyenne to Roseville and back, uh, with the uh, 4014 Big Boy hauling the, all the, the Union Pacific consist, the passenger cars. Uh, they picked up, I believe, in Sparks, Nevada, they picked up a Feather River route painted uh, diesel, came over, came over the Feather River route down to Sacramento, and then went back up over the pass uh, yesterday, or day before yesterday. No, it was no, it was yesterday. Yeah, sorry, long week. Um, so yeah, and fortunately for us, the main line that it ran goes backs up to our property line in uh, lovely Newcastle. So we got a, as you guys will have seen on the video just now and heard. Uh, apologies if the volume is too loud. I've never mixed a train before. Um, yeah, it's it was. One of the coolest things I have ever seen. Yeah, we were 50, 50 feet, feet, 50 yeah. feet from the tracks, and uh, with uh, with our buddy Pat Walsh, the radio host. It, it, uh, that's who you. That's who you hear in the background. Um, I might clip in the beginning of Pat's video yeah, here, wo whooping like a little kid. And I he, love. He Pat. was having. He was having a great time, man. Pat was a. I, I. I. said right before the train came by. Depending on what cut of the video I use, you may have heard me say it. I told. I told my – we had two Patricks, Pat Walsh and then my brother Patrick. I leaned over to Patrick and said, I don't think anyone here is ready for how fucking big this thing is. It's two fucking stories tall. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah, and just – you know, it's an oil-fired uh, engine now. It was converted from coal to oil, and the amount of smoke that that thing was putting out – was just ridiculous. I man. saw that. I didn't know it was converted over from coal. Yeah, yeah. I assumed it was coal. Back, back in the day, there's a. I'll link. I'll put a link in the video below. There's a great channel on YouTube called Animatics that he does. He makes single dude makes detailed like drafting design plans of stuff, and he'll break down with animation like how all the like he's done. This airplane from World War II, submarines. He did one breaking down how all the mechanics of that steam locomotive, the big boy, works. The amount of engineering to make, to feed coal from the tender. They didn't have a fireman scooping. It was an auger system. And then it was flung out into the firebox. And they, like, the amount of moving parts in that piece of machinery is absolutely mind boggling wow. and how everything is in it, it precisely timed so that it functions as efficiently as possible. It's right wild. On. Nice. But, yeah, it was really cool. Uh, do not want to know how much the tickets were. Uh, the reason it was pulling the passenger, the old banana yellow union Pacific passenger yeah. consist. Uh, if you were a museum supporter, you got first dibs to tickets, but they did an excursion from uh, Roseville to Sparks that included a. Sorry, just something fell over. Okay. That included a uh, dinner the night before, shuttle from the Hilton in Sacramento to the train, mm -hmm. ride on the train, and then luxury shuttle bus back from Sparks back to Sacramento. So, yeah, I do not want to know how much tickets cost for that. I kind of do. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious. But uh, price available upon request. Yeah, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. Yeah, <clears throat> and they had it on display in Roseville. Went down and checked that out. It was cool. I saw pictures. Uh, one of our our buddies, Wes, took his kids to go see Big Boy on Friday. The amount of people that were there, given it was also the opening day of the state fair, was unreal. Yeah, my uh, my grandma, my mom's mom, went out and did uh, two of the cars they were hauling our is actually a museum 
you walk through and learn the history of the Union Pacific Railroad and the big boy. She was in line for over an hour to get on in the car, and I'm like, Grandma, you're going to die in this heat, but good luck. God bless. Hey, if the heat hasn't got her yet, it ain't getting her. <laughs> yeah. This is true. But, yeah, it was really cool. It was cool. I agree. And we could, the craziest thing was how long we could still hear it. Like this, it, they, uh, if you didn't see it, it got stuck in Auburn for four hours because it, uh, it tried to fight a pine tree that fell across the tracks, which how no one called that in or saw that boggles my mind. But it happened apparently at like the perfect spot where no one was. But we could hear it all the way up until it stopped in Auburn. And like what, two miles, like a mile and a half, two miles away, we could steer, still hear it blowing its whistle oh, yeah. and shit. It's oh, yeah. loud, as, loud as shit. And I don't even, and you can't even call that a whistle. It's more of a wail. Yeah. The the, the sound is great. And uh, thank you guys for posting the videos to Facebook because I had to, you know, be a, an adult and go to work. Yeah. But, uh, but I'm glad you guys posted the videos because that was cool to see. Wait, you went to work on Saturday? On Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Okay. And, and I'll throw out because my buddy Ethan was all but hurt that he couldn't see it. They're doing a Heartland of America tour later this fall where they're going to go south from Cheyenne. They're going to go Nebraska, Kansas, Colorado, or not Colorado, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma. They're going to go down to Houston and back up. So uh, check Union Pacific's website. They did a really good job of updating the route. Uh, they had the live tracker, so every 15 minutes you could see where it was. So if you've got, dip, like in Auburn, if you have two different lines going through your town, it'll tell you which one it's going to ta- take so you can uh, plan accordingly. But it was cool. All right. It was pretty cool. Six-foot drive wheels. Insane. So, Greg, tell What are we me. smoking today? Yes, that's what I was about to ask you. So today we are smoking a fan favorite. Uh, this is a fan favorite of Mr. William Brown from Boise, Idaho. You may have seen pictures of his oasis and the drinks cabinet that is not on the ground because it's a radio. But uh, this is his favorite stick. It is the La Gloria Cubana Series R Maduro. This happens to be the number five, which is the Robusto. It is a lovely Maduro. Uh, it is a Dominican Republic origin cigar. The uh, wrapper is Connecticut Broadleaf in Maduro. And if you can see, those of you that are watching on YouTube, quite dark. Uh, It is a Nicaraguan binder with Dominican and Nicaraguan fillers. You know, it's, to me, it's a very sweet tasting smoke. Um, This, though it looks dangerously heavy because of its very dark appearance, I don't think it's a, a full heavy Maduro, like, say, an LFD or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I particularly enjoy this one in the morning with coffee. That's typically when I choose to smoke this one. And believe it or not, once in a while, I do choose black coffee, and this is the cigar with black coffee for me. Yeah, I can see that. This is this is probably the lightest Maduro I think I've smoked in a long time. And the contrast between how dark this looks... And how actually light it smokes is is funny, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's this is really smooth. And, um, no bite really at all on this, but uh, some super rich flavor. Yeah, yeah. I was expecting a bite and didn't get it. I was actually a little disappointed that I didn't get a bite, but it is smooth, pretty nice. I got a little bit of pepper. The only problem, and we've talked about this before, depending on what you pair it with. The Heaven's Door is kind of overshadowing the cigar for me. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, maybe a little bit. I haven't had. I've only had a, a couple of little sips of the uh, of the uh, Heaven's Door. But speaking of, uh, what are we drinking? Now that you say that, yeah, this is probably a little too much for this cigar. It's not going to stop us, though. No, not at all. Uh, we are uh, drinking. Scotty, can you hand me that? Of course. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, Ascension. Uh, uh, Ascension uh, from Heaven's Door with uh, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. This is uh, uh, the Bob Dylan collaboration okay. whiskey. Um, it's been out, I think he's been out about a year now. 
Yeah. Uh, this is our second bottle of this uh, uh, from from Heaven's Door. We had a uh, we had a rye, I believe, was the other one. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, it's nice nice sipping whiskey. How's that uh, How's that dipping thing going there, Mr. Robinson? Not bad, not bad. Let's see if I can do that without dropping ash in there. First time I ever tried this, I dropped ash in. Oh, jeez. I drank it. Now, I saw something really trippy on Facebook yesterday, I think. Um, Schwarzenegger was talking about the first time he had a cigar, and what his friend did was actually he had a glass of tequila, mm -hmm. and he took a cedar, piece of cedar, and dipped it into the tequila and then brushed the cigar with it. Hmm. Cut it, light it, smoked it, and then dipped the this end mm -hmm. into the tequila and smoked it. It's like, hmm, that might be worth trying. It's got some good agave. Yeah. I, I think, mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? Exactly. But, no, I kind of like that little addition with Heaven's Door, just a little dip into the um, the cigar with a little dip into the um, Heaven's Door. Yeah, no, that's a... Uh... I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember ever having one of these. I, um, hmm. It's a it's a cigar bid find for me most of the time. Hmm. Yeah. Um, they do. One of our local shops that does sell this one is uh, CJ Cigars up in Eldorado Hills. Oh, okay. And she sells the um, seven by seventy or eight by eighty. I can't remember which of both the Maduro and the Natural. And uh, believe it or not, the higher the, the large, in this case, it's absolutely true that larger ring gauge is far more mild than this one is. Hmm. But uh, it's a great intermediate expense stick. It's not very expensive normally, unless you live in California, New York, Massachusetts, or a few others. And it's just a good, you know, it's, I can tell you from Mr. Brown's viewpoint, it's probably one of his go tos uh, when he's got them in his humidor because hmm. he likes them. No, this is a, uh... This is a nice, uh, nice tip. Yeah, it is. Now I want to talk about something for just a second because it's not like I've discovered anything. But I've had this for a while. Got it as a Christmas gift. And it's your cigar tool. So you've got a couple of punches. Got a little thing so you don't burn your fingers like a crack addict. Do we know this from personal experience? Fuck you. Anyway. <laughs> said that because he's black, didn't you? <laughs> and then, oh. of course, to get into that cigar, if you got a plug. Ah, Reamer. Don't ever say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Reamer, anyway. I hardly know her. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so, I have always been a fan of the straight cut. I'm pretty simple. Get lots of smoke. I started messing with this, and I started doing punches on my cigars over the past week. Kind of like it. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. My normal go-to is a straight cut, but for larger ring gauge cigars, I typically fall into Larry's, Larry's line of thinking now. The larger the ring gauge cigar, I think a punch is better. Um, you know, and it, it typically, in some cases, like a Lancero, a little punch really intensifies the flavor even more. So it's definitely an option. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's funny. I, I go in stages. Um, I'll, I'll go two or three weeks where I'm not doing anything but V-cutting stuff. Yeah. Because most of what I smoke is this ring gauge or bigger. Mm -hmm. And then I will I, I'll leave my V-cutter someplace or uh, I'll start with a, with a punch. And then I'll punch everything for a week. And then I'm back. You know, it just, it's, I'm all over the map when it comes to that kind of stuff. Now, Larry, can I ask out of your V-cutting? Uh-huh. Beg your pardon. Jesus. Um, do you just do the single or do you do the crown cut or the cross? Do you Or is it just one? Just one. Mm -hmm. Now, the only time I've ever done a, a, a cross um, is on something like the, uh, um, Asylum 13s, the big 70 or 80 ring gauge. And honestly, oh, yeah. even that doesn't come out real well. Anytime you're putting something that gives you the point, you know, in the cap, 
you're just asking for stuff to roll back so you're you got loose leaf uh, tobacco in your mouth every time you're taking a draw. Yeah, that's kind of a pain in the ass. But um, um, yeah, so if I'm V cutting, I'm single on everything. Um, sometimes I will double cut, but it's the same direction. Yeah, you know? yeah. I feel like I, I just don't like the V cut. I've tried it a couple of times. It's just not my favorite thing. Is the gorilla escaping from his enclosure? Who has the who has the tranquilizer gun? Escape, escape. Be on the lookout. Gorilla on the loose. Ah. So what else do we have here? We We aren't talking about certain things just for the reason that it's two days old. By the time this is recorded, it'll be a week, and there's a whole bunch of speculation, and everybody knows what I'm fucking talking about. So don't get weird, but um, we're just going to let the chips fall where they may. We may talk about it on a future episode or we might not. Yeah, let's talk about a new cigar out from one of our favorites, the three of us collectively. Adventura has released a new cigar. Say what? Yes, sir. It is called the Blue Eyed Jack's Revenge. It is a beautiful blue box with a blue band. Uh, it is a San Andreas Colorado wrapper. Binder is or uh, Dominicana and filler Dominicana tobacco. Five years aged, aging uh, aging room for six months. Strength is medium. That is uh, on its way to retailers as we speak. In fact, I believe the first event that uh, Henderson Venter is having is somewhere on the East Coast, but the cigar is out, and I can't wait to get a hold of it. Oh, man, that sounds Wow. Great. It's a good-looking cigar. Uh, three sizes, it looks like. There is a, a Toro 54 by 6 a Robusto yes. 52 by 3 and a Corona 44 by 6 Outstanding. Ooh. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's that's funny you brought that up today because I, I literally smoked the last Adventura in my humidor. Oh, um, no shit. I think <laughs> Thursday or that uh, – yeah, I think I'm pretty sure it was Thursday night. I have and, one left. Uh, I got two was, left, that and that's my it. My last one, man. And I've I've picked it up three or four times, and I'm like, then I start thinking about what I got going on. You know that day, I'm like, nope, nope, I'm not gonna be able to give this the time I want to give it. It's the last one. I don't want to have you know be setting it down, relighting it. So I want to be able to sit and smoke it. And uh, so that's what I did Thursday after work. Okay, <laughs> it just makes me think of something. Right. You have that. No, no, no. It's not bad. Does anyone have that one cigar? You've already told us that one cigar that just sits in your humidor, portable, or your one at home. It sits there lovingly. And when you open up your humidor and you look at that cigar, you think you're going to grab it, but you're like, no. You start thinking about stupid shit like, is the weather conducive for me to smoke this cigar? Will I have the proper amount of time to smoke this cigar? Am I really in the mindset to truly enjoy this cigar? You've already told us you're one. I've got two. I've got more than one, but um, I yeah that that the Adventura is one of them, mm -hmm. um, which I'm now out of. Uh, the red car. Oh yeah, was, which I am now out of. And those don't exist anymore. Um, and there's a couple. I mean, I've got a couple of Byrons that uh, have been in my humidor for years. Yep. That, you know, I just, I, I, I think the biggest reason I haven't smoked, I, I think I got three of them. They're the metal uh, metal tube Byrons. And I think the, the biggest reason uh, is that I'm just, they've been there so long. I'm so used to seeing those when I open my humidor. I just don't want there to only be two or only be one. You know what I mean? Uh, there needs to be all three of them. Um, You're not breaking up the band. Yeah, you know, we're getting the band back together. Um, and there's a couple others, you know, that that you drag out for, for a long time. You know, Diplomaticos. Um, oh, yes. Um, uh, Monte Cristo number twos. You know, it's, yeah, if you got to, you got to sit down and you got to think for a minute before you, you that's going to be your the cigar you light that day. Yeah. You know, um, you know, I don't want that thing. Uh, I'm not going to light it on a, uh, on a day we're driving four hours and I'm going to have the window down. That's going to help, help burn that cigar out. You right. Know, something right. Like that. It's just dumb shit like that. You think about when you're, uh, when you're looking at going to one of the, you know, one of the top shelf, uh, 
you know, exclusive uh, oh, yeah. uh, humidor finds there. I know. I got a whole top shelf that's that way. What what would be the what would be the one cigar? Yeah, the one. We're not talking about a shelf. We're talking about the one. Do I only have to have one of them, or can I have multiples of them? No, it's the one. That that one cigar. <sighs> All right. On the top shelf of my humidor is it's a pair, so I'm sorry it's not one. But Scott knows these cigars because Scott procured them for me. I have two left of my Cohiba Lanceros that are real Cubans bought from a reputable retailer in Ocho Rio, if I remember right. Ocho Rios, yes. So there are two left, and you're absolutely right. They've been sitting there as a pair for about four years now. That I look well, at them. you hoping they mate and make more Cubans? Well, hey, you know, why not? That's how Cubans are made, isn't it? Um, you know, it's, it's that same thing. Is it the right time? Is it the right place? Is it the right now? But, but uh, given that, given that, you know, we're not going to be going back to Jamaica anytime soon to get some more. Uh, Don't be too sure. Okay, great. It well, okay. Let me put it this way: you may be going to Jamaica again, but are we really going to drop a thousand dollars for a box? No. <laughs> that being said, I'm not anyway. So yes, I completely understand that. I do have one light blue car left, Larry. Asshole. Uh-huh. I have one yellow car left. It, both are in Lancero. So, yeah, those are ones that, in case you guys have not heard us tell this story before, was a company called uh, Via Havana. And, uh, unfortunately, it's no longer in business anymore, and those were some killer sticks. Yeah, they were. And the thing that's irritating about that is it's not like we didn't realize how good those sticks were. We and always assumed there'd be lots of them. We, uh, number one, we assumed there'd be lots of them. Yeah, we did. Number two, even when we heard that they that, that the company was dissolving and they were going away, I don't think any one of the three of us made a bold purchase on a on a bunch of those. No, and we I for sure had the opportunity because our regular brick and mortar was one of their biggest retailers. Yeah, and we could have talked to the owner of that brick and mortar and said, hey. Get us everything you can, and he absolutely would have. Yep. And I, it pisses me off every time I think about it that I didn't go to to the proprietor of Tobacco Republic and Loomis and go, hey, I want all of the Via Havanas you can get me, because that that that's just probably the single biggest mistake I've made yeah. in the cigar purchasing in, in, in the thirty years I've been doing this. Because that's they're gone, they're not coming back, and those were really, really, really good cigars. Truly, truly, mm-hmm. and the for, and the price point was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Lancero I, at eleven ninety five. I smoke stuff for two and three times the price point that weren't even anywhere close to as good a cigar. Yeah, someone has some hoarded somewhere. Well, I told you the the last three that i got i bought in um redding at a liquor store slash cigar shop hey i know that place yeah yeah and adios to you gorilla pop and or taco my friend he's like fuck you i'm leaving (laughs) um but yeah uh it was one of those you know that that Miss Daisy found on, uh, on our our trip out to the to the coast up uh, up into Oregon, you know. Yeah. And she's always looking for you know stuff along our route. Okay, we're gonna go here. And I pull into this place, and it's a strip mall, and I'm looking at it like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm like, okay, uh, you know, it's, it's, she's she's pretty good at you know doing her due diligence. I'm like, all right, let's check it out. And we walked in there, and they have a actual humidor i'm like okay this this is looking better and uh yeah because it was so far out you know out in the sticks yeah they had two or three things that i hadn't seen in a long time i'm like but yeah i'm kind of trolling around i'm like i'll take these like you got any more of those no i think that's the last of it they they, you know we've had those for a long time i'm like yeah even better (laughs) you sure you want to look in the back look under the card table you got any more but uh yeah, so that was cool. Um, that, uh, 
was uh, what was the other thing they had? Oh, they had some of the original Gurkha shaggies in oh. there too. Oh yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like, man, those are old. Yeah. You know, but as long as they're humidified correctly, they'll last forever. But you know, I mean, reasonably forever. But yeah, long and enough. Long enough. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, every once in a while you can, you can run across something that uh, uh, is kind of out of print, so to speak. And don't be afraid to buy them when you see them because they ain't coming back. Yep. And if we were smart, we could, you know, I know what they were selling that company for. We should have looked at a small business loan. Yeah, none of us speak Spanish, though. We can find somebody. Yeah, because that worked out real well. Hey, honey, I want to buy part of a cigar house. That's probably not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Probably easier than getting your third dog. True. <laughs> well, speaking of that, here's the email about the robot dog. It's on its way. Yeah, don't get your hopes up. Yeah, yeah. I know better than that because exactly. you're tied in a bark on a tree. No, I didn't say I was going to bring it. We put it out last week for sponsorship. Oh, is that what we did? We did. Yeah, who said they were going to get us this robot? Oh, nobody dog? yet, but yeah, we're exactly. hoping. Somebody, info at LoomisCigarCartel.com. Send us a robot dog and not the stupid little one from the mall. Hey, you know that's the hey, f- let, let, let me Let me clarify this. This is not by no means, way, shape, or form an us asking for this. <laughs> this is these two jackasses. What do you mean these two? Uh, this I didn't jack- ask for shit. I don't want to have nothing to do with that fucking robot dog. Neither just do so, I, frankly. So we're clear. It creeps me out. <laughs> don't be a p- that's some hills have eyes bullshit. Amen, Larry. <laughs> Fuck you, man. That's the next thing that, it like like uh, Gorilla said last week, it'll come up to the side of the bed and go, hello, Father, it's time for breakfast. Yeah, yeah, bullshit. That's a bitch be in so many pieces, you know. Whew. But it'd be great. Dr. So- Seuss couldn't put that fucker back together. Somebody fucks with me, they're going out, going to their car, all of a sudden they hear, gee, gee, gee. You have like entered this. the country of Robinsonia illegally. Prepare to die. Gives a whole new meaning to the term doggy style. <laughs> so I got to thinking today, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. this morning, <laughs> on my first break at, at work. So I know, Robinson, you're a fan. Larry, I don't typically see you smoking very small ring gauges or smaller size cigars often. But I know Scott does a lot when he's got, you know, 20 minutes to half an hour to kill on the balcony. He'll pick up a Corona or something smaller on occasion. We often will smoke a little cigarillo. So how often are y'all, and I know more directly towards Scott than Larry, but Larry, please feel free to chime in. How often are you guys looking for something, something that you enjoy for a little cigar like that? I know I've found a few of them. Uh, through ver- Cigar Bit and various other sites that we've been smoking at work because it's quick 10 minutes. Yeah. Go out, take a break, relax, and then go back in. Mm-hmm. The current one is a box of Davidoff. They're Davidoff cigarillos, and, I mean, it, it's Davidoff, so they're just exquisite to begin with. But, but you know, thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I've had the Davidoffs that you're talking about, and I do smoke one every now and then. Um, just if it's something I we're going to take a short trip, uh, especially if it's later in the day and I don't want to start a stick mm-hmm. that I know I'm not going to be able to smoke when we get to where we're going. And then I'm not going to want to stay up to finish it. Then I will get a, a cig- one of the smaller cigarillos, the Davidoffs for sure. Um, Rocky Patel has a, I think there are 10 of them in the, the tin. The yeah. juniors, yeah, the juniors. Oh yes, um, those are oh, those are very good. Uh, and there was another one. I'm trying to think what it was. I haven't had one in, in a long time. They're um, they come four to a ten, and I can't think of what the even who the manufacturer is or anything. Uh, I know Tatuaje does some f- little ones like that in four four yeah. count that are pretty good. Yeah, um, but then you know it's. It, it's kind of going to depend on the time. Uh, if I've got a half hour to 45, then I'm looking at a small Camacho. 
uh, you know, something that's a little bit bigger than your your uh, your Davidoff you're talking about. But uh, um, I don't know. It's yeah, it's all it's all based on I think time for me. Yeah, you know, how much time do I have to smoke? Have you guys ever had the Ashton um, Senoritas? Not that I can recall. Fantastic. God, that's not for a long time, but now that you mention that, yeah. Yeah, I pick them up over at Cigar Club, brick and mortar over by um, Expo. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when I go to visit Pat's show, I do that once a week. I'll pop over to Cigar Club. If I'm out of them, I'll pick up a box. This is not the two weeks to go near that place if you don't have to. Yeah. But, uh, no, it's one of those where I think that... It, you know, they have their place. And I think in watching people when they're smoking cigars, typically, I think they get ignored because they're so small. Yeah. You know, uh, it's perfect for a 10 minute break. Like I use them at work. You do it at, on a break when work, you got to yeah. get away from the computer for a bit, you oh, know? Yeah. Uh, I think it's something that people look at and they, they just don't give them their credit when they're due. Yeah. I think so. Well, I'm halfway through mine. You're about halfway through, Mr. Robinson. <laughs> Larry? Uh, I'm, a, I'm about a third of the way through. Typical for you, though. You yeah. smoke a lot slower than we do. Um, no, I like this. This is, this is very nice. I would definitely do another one of these. Oh, yeah. Is it getting stronger as you get um, closer? I know I'm about two-thirds. Yeah, about between half and two-thirds of the way through, and I'm getting a little more strength out of it. I'm not there yet. It's possible. It's gotten a little... The, the flavor note has definitely gotten more leathery versus earthy uh, in the second half of it. But, um, you know, I'm trying not to get it, let it heat up too much, not to puff on it as fast as I normally would. So it is changing a little bit. Okay. And I don't know if that's me hotboxing it or if that's just the profile that they, they want it. Yeah, I'm giving mine a break. I'm going to see if I can get the temperature down a little bit. Mm-hmm. See if it kind of evens out a bit. Yeah. That's yeah, funny. Some some sticks will do that, some won't. Mm-hmm. You know, some will cool off a little bit if you set it, you know, set it down for a minute. Right. Some of them just hold right on. For no sure. more uh, no more mail. Uh, that's been the only mail that we've gotten recently. Um these people got to step it up a little bit. Yeah, no kidding. Apparently I, apparently I need to be more offensive. Very likely. I did get an email reply back from the new... Um, crap. I'm blanking on Josh's the, title. The, the new crap? The new the new uh, head of the Premium Cigar Association, Josh Aberski, is going to uh, sit down with us in August and chat. Awesome. So we can look forward nice. to that. Um that's coming up in the near future here as soon as we nail down a date uh, that what, he's free. What would you say his title was? He's Grand Poobah now? Uh, yes, he got promoted uh, to, he's the, for lack of a better thing, I'm sorry, I'm not remembering his title. He's the new executive director. Uh, exalted Water Buffalo. Yes. <laughs> you know, and uh, I'm glad, I'm comes, glad to see that happen. Somewhere next week, Josh can be listening to this just cussing me. Going, oh, that jackass. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, oh man. It burns so good. Very, very nice. I mean, other than that, you know, uh, I don't really have that much other topics. I mean, there's tons of things we could go on about conspiracy theories. Well, but let's, let's leave wait. That alone. Yeah. Let's leave that alone for now. I mean, there's enough of those floating around. Mm-hmm. So I think it's about that time. So if you wouldn't mind, take me home. Wrong button. <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. Come home, gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> Toast to Harambe. <laughs> well, cigar's getting close to the nub. My drink glass is empty. Drinking lots more water, though. So I think it's about that time. I want to thank everybody out there who is listening and on behalf of the absent gorilla larry greg and myself thank you for listening check us out at loomcigarcartel.com like and share us on facebook follow us on instagram don't be a stranger come on be like my man rich rich 
drop us a line. Let us know you're out there. I'm Scott Robinson, and on behalf of all of us here at Beyond the Humidor, we look forward to chatting with you on the next episode. But until then, stay healthy and safe, and good smoke, good drink, and good life, and God bless fucking America. Amen. <laughs>